night before the experiment starts. I have about six minutes before I need to go to bed, so I'm going to try and record this quickly. Uh, I chose to do a self-help experiment in the categories of productivity and success and wealth. Um, it, studies show that productivity and how you allocate your time is directly correlated to um, reaching your goals, building success, and building wealth. Um, so if you know me, you know exactly why I decided to choose this experiment. Uh, I will be following the Millionaire's Daily Routine, which derived from a experiment, or study rather, that Sarah Stanley Fala or Fela, I don't know how to pronounce her name, um, she's the Director of Research for the Affluent Market Institute, studied more than 600 millionaires for her book, The Next Millionaire Next Door, Enduring Strategies for Building Wealth. So um, the routine that I'm following is derived from some of the generalizations of um, the millionaire's daily routine that um, you know she saw throughout this study. So for a little bit more context, um, this study took over the place of five years and Sarah studied 600 millionaires um, and their daily routines during this time. Now I'm going to read a quote from the book really quickly. Um, Sarah says, focusing on goals is related to building wealth regardless of age and income. The decisions we make, particularly related to the allocation of our time, energy, and money, impact our ability to become financially independent. Uh, and that is my goal, you guys, to become financially independent. Though this experiment is supposed to cover three days, I really do want this to become a lifestyle. It takes 21 days to build a habit um, and 90 days to build a lifestyle. So I'm going to continue, uh, you know, following this routine uh, after the three days. Now you might be saying, okay, what exactly is the routine? So I'll share now. Millionaires read five and a half hours per week. This is compared to the average American who reads two hours per week. Millionaires um, work out or exercise six hours per week compared to Americans who on average spend two and a half hours exercising. Uh, millionaires spend two and a half hours per week on social media compared to the average American who spends 14 hours per week on social media. So. If you say that you don't have time in your day to do homework or do whatever else is on your to-do list, you actually spend two hours or more on social media per day. So there is time. Lastly, uh, millionaires go to bed at 9.30 p.m. and wake up on 4.30 a.m. Now, this is um, on average. Usually, millionaires spend less than eight hours a night on sleep. Um, and, but typically they go to bed around 9 p.m., wake up around 4 a.m. And there are even studies that show that the best times to be sleeping is between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. And that after 4 a.m., uh, sleep becomes artificial. Now, aside from these four things I just listed, in general, uh, millionaires spend their time around other successful people and eat healthy. So I'm going to sort of add those things in or try to add those things in uh, within the next three days. Um, so I am really excited, like I said, to embark on this journey um, and conduct this experiment, if you will, um, because this correlates to some of the goals, life goals that I have for myself. Six figures by 22, seven figures by 25. I claim it. I manifest it. I believe that this is me. Um really just starting my journey to reaching those goals and showing that I'm really serious about it. So I'm hoping that, um, I, I know, let me say that, let me not say that I hope, I know that starting this journey now, um, following this daily schedule now is going to lead to me achieving those goals in the future, in the near future. Um, now, before I close, I do want to share some shocking information that um, I found out about a two days ago, a couple of days ago. I was sharing with my mother that I had this project that I had to do um, that I would be 
doing this self-help experiment. I would be following the Millionaire's Daily Routine. And I was like, Mom, I'm going to bed at 9.30 p.m. I am waking up at 4.30 a.m. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And she goes, let me give her a name, Stephanie. Let's, let's call her Stephanie. She goes, oh, you know, Stephanie uh, also goes to bed around 9 p.m., wakes up at 4 a.m. She reads daily. Um, now, Stephanie is a family friend of ours who is a millionaire. She flies first class. Um, we just came from her wedding in April. Um, she just bought a mansion or a mini mansion in New Jersey. Uh, it is gorgeous. And I am like, what? She follows the schedule? So as if I was not already a believer that this routine works, I... <laughs> I am like sold. I'm like, this, this works. This works. And now do I expect to have a million dollars at in these three days? No. But I definitely believe that how you spend your time, how you allocate your time, your energy, your money, um, is directly correlated to building wealth and building success, whatever success looks like for you. Um, so that was not only shocking, but encouraging. Um, it really does put some fire under my feet to know that another black woman follows this um, routine unintentionally and is out there, she her goes, making her money. And so um, it's like I'm looking, by looking at her, I'm looking at my future. Uh, so anywho, I'm gonna close it here and I'll see you at 4.30 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Good morning. It is 4.30. Oh, my voice. I literally just woke up. I cannot believe I am up right now. But I feel so refreshed. Like it was there was no problem waking up. Um but yeah, I am up. I think the first thing I want to knock off the list is reading. So I'm gonna read for an hour and five minutes. Um, my two books. I'm gonna read this. I think it's gonna be backward for you guys, but Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? Um, by Beverly Tatum. And then, because I'm starting my business, I'm going to be reading um, Nolo's Guide to Single Member LLCs. I'm gonna be taking notes on this. Um, after that, I'm gonna work out for an hour and then finish my essay, which is due tomorrow for one of my classes. So that's sort of the lineup today. And then yesterday, I forgot to mention that um, millionaires also meditate, usually for 10 minutes. That's another general thing that they do. Um, so I've never meditated before outside of yoga. But um, that's sort of the lineup, so I'll, I'll check in with you guys later. Hey there! So it is the end of day one. Um, I know I didn't record a lot of footage today. That is because it is Memorial Day, so I was out <laughs> literally all day at a barbecue. So didn't really get time to record anything. Um, and there was so much that I wanted to, um, you know, say on camera, but I'll leave it all for tomorrow. But just to summarize the day, um, I spent about two hours reading. I didn't read the two books that uh, I showed this morning, but I did read um, something else, uh, Benjamin Franklin's The Way to Wealth. I read that and I'm actually going to reference some of, you know, the quotes and ideas that were mentioned um, through the, throughout the text um, and relate it to this experiment. So I'm going to do that tomorrow and I'm really excited for that. So like I said, I was out all day and I didn't get to record a lot of the things that I wanted to record. Um, just some, you know, little details about my day. I didn't get to finish, um, the full hour of my workout because I had to hurry up and leave, um, to travel. And what else? Oh, I did really good with not being on social media. I think the last time I checked, I spent a, a little less, a little over uh, 20 minutes on social media today, which 
uh, as compared to the hour and 22 minutes that I usually spend on average per day. So I'm really proud of that. Um, but yeah, that, that's about it. My day went really well. Like I said earlier, I was so refreshed when I woke up at 4.30 a.m. So I'm excited to get to bed early again and wake up early again. So I'll see you at 4.30. Good morning. It is day two. <clears throat> there goes my voice again. It's day two um, of the experiment. And I'm so, so excited to tackle the day. It was a little bit harder waking up this morning compared to, um, you know, last night, uh, or the night before, rather. Uh, but I think that's because I had a really, really busy day. Um, but I'm still up. I am recording this at 5 a.m. Um, but I did wake up at 4.30 today, I promise. Uh, so today... I have a lot to do, sort of. I have to finish that essay that I told you about. Yesterday I wrote two pages. I have math homework to finish, and then I have work later on this evening. So I do have a busy lineup, but I'm really excited, excited to read and um, not spend more than 30 minutes on social media again, um, which was so rewarding because it, it gave me back an hour and 22 minutes of my time. Um, and also, yesterday I was sharing this experience with my friend. She said that she wanted to join in with me. So I'm excited to see how she does and if she woke up today at 4.30. So I'll check in with you guys later. Hey everyone, I'm back. And as promised, I wanted to use some of the readings and texts that we looked at throughout this course and relate it back to this self-help experiment that I am doing. So the first reading that I want to look back at is Benjamin Franklin's The Way to Wealth. The first quote that I'm going to read uh, talks about sleep. Now before I jump into reading the quote, I do want to share that millionaires typically work more and sleep less than the average American. Um, one millionaire reported working 100 hours per week. Another millionaire reported sleeping five hours per night. Now, I am not suggesting that you work 100 hours per week or get five hours sleep per night. Uh, that is not healthy. Please get the amount of sleep that you know you need. Uh, but that's just a that's just some information that I wanted to share before we jump into the quote. Aside from this, um, typically self-help routines and self-help books that relate to productivity stress getting up early. They typically show us getting up, you know, around 4 a.m., 5 a.m., just before 7 a.m. Um, when everyone else is sleeping, get up, and this will make you more productive and uh, get more done during your day. So with that being said, I'll jump into the quote. Franklin says, how much more than is necessary do we spend in sleep? Forgetting that the sleeping fox catches no poultry and that there will be sleeping enough in the grave, as poor Richard says. If time be all things, the more precious, waste and time must be, as poor Richard says, the greatest prodigality, since, as he elsewhere tells us, lost time is never found again. And what we call time enough always proves little enough. Let us then be up and doing, and doing to the purpose, so by diligence, shall we do more with less perplexity sloth makes all things difficult but industry all easy as poor richard says and he that riseth late must trot all day and shall scarce overtake his business at night while laziness travels slowly that poverty soon overtakes him as we read in poor richard who adds drive thy business let not that drive thee and early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. So already, you know, thinking about the routine that I'm following, going to sleep at 9.30 p.m., waking up at 4.30 a.m., this directly relates to this experiment and correlates to the promises or desired outcome of the millionaire's daily routine. If you go to sleep early, you wake up early, it makes you more productive, you get your work done, and thus 
achieve your goals and create wealth for yourself. Now, people are always talking about how they don't have enough time in their day to achieve their goals. People always either want to start a business or, you know, pick up a new hobby, all these different things, but they always they don't have enough time to uh, achieve those goals or things that they set out to do. But then you look at their schedule or you look at their routines or daily habits and it's no surprise why they think they don't have enough time. They go to sleep late, wake up late, procrastinate, don't um, stick to a routine, um, spend time on social media, all these different things add up and makes us believe that we don't have enough time in our day. I wanna look back at the quote again and um, specifically where it says, sloth makes all things difficult, but industry all easy, as poor Richard says. And he that riseth late must trot all day and shall scarce overtake his business at night. While laziness travels slowly, that poverty soon overtakes him. We definitely need to get into the millionaire mindset of waking up early, grinding, and hustling to get to where we want. I think so many of us get comfortable in these, you know, routines where, like I said, we're going to bed late, waking up late, um, spending time on social media. The average American spends two hours a day on social media. I know for myself, I looked at my average before starting this experiment, and I spent an hour and 22 minutes per day um, on social media. That's extra time in our day that we could be using to start that business, to, um, you know, start that new hobby, develop that new skill that we wanted. Um, and we really do have that time in our day once we look at our schedule and sacrifice some of those things that make us feel comfortable, such as spending time on social media, going to sleep when we want, watching endless hours of TV. Now, the next quote that I want to look at is going to talk a bit about um, the social and leisure aspects of success, if you will. Franklin says, Methinks I hear some of you say, Must a man afford himself no leisure? I will tell thee, my friend, what poor Richard says. Employ thy time well, if thou meanest to gain leisure. And since thou art not sure of a minute, throw not away an hour. Leisure is time for doing something useful. This leisure the diligent man will obtain, but the lazy man never. So that, as poor Richard says, a life of leisure and a life of laziness are two things. Do you imagine that sloth will afford you more comfort than labor? Oh my gosh, I love this quote. Because I think when we talk about entrepreneurship specifically, the topic of um, social life or leisure time always pops up. And I know for myself, as I'm starting my own business um, and turning a, the club that I have at school into an organization, right? So now I sort of have two businesses that I'm working on. Um, so many people are like, oh, when do you have time to go out or hang out with friends and do X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, I could care less about that right now. I think sometimes youth need to understand the difference between enjoying their youth and destroying their future. So when people always bring up, um, you know, me not hanging out, or, you know, just this whole social life and leisure thing. When people bring that up, I always remind myself and I always remind them that your network and social life and making $50,000 a year looks different when you're making $5 million a year. And I want a social life and network at the $5 million a year um, standpoint. And I know that I have to work to get to, you know, that point in my life. And so that means sacrificing some things now as a teenager. But for me, that's worth it in the end. 
Um, so I wanted to go back to the quote again, uh, specifically at the end where it says, this leisure the diligent man will obtain, but the lazy man never. So that as poor Richard says, a life of leisure and a life of laziness are two things. Do you imagine that sloth will afford you more comfort than labor? So I want to talk a little bit about Gary V. Uh, I, I know that many of you or a few of you who are interested in entrepreneurship or financial literacy, financial, you know, dependence, um, that you know Gary V. He is a millionaire. Um, and a lot of his, you know, YouTube videos or messages are geared towards, you know, youth and millennials. And there was one video of his that always, always, um, you know, sticks in my brain every time I watch it. And when I bring, when people bring up the topic of, you know, this entrepreneurship journey forces you to sacrifice, um, you know, social life. So he was talking, and I'm going to paraphrase, he was basically saying that his friends whom he had, you know, in college would now say, Gary, you are so lucky, you know, that you've had this, all this success and now wealth. And he tells them, no, don't call me lucky. Remember when we were in college and you all were out partying, drinking, and, you know, messing with girls and I was at home working on my business, developing and growing my business. Don't call me lucky because I worked to get to where I am now. And that inspired me. That convicted me. So many people, like I said before, specifically when thinking about youth, they confuse enjoying their youth with destroying their future. In life, sacrifices need to be made. And if you have a goal in mind and you know what it takes to get there, then you're going to sacrifice what you need to sacrifice, um, do what you need to do to get to that point. And I think for me, in this journey of entrepreneurship, even doing this experiment and making it a lifestyle, there are some sacrifices that I I need to uh, make. One of them being my comfortability, um, and you know, fighting my uh, fighting myself, uh, you know, and making sure that I am um, persistent and sticking to this routine. It is hard, but sacrifices need to be made to get to where I want to go and to achieve my goals. So as we wrap up this quote, and like I said before, I really do love this quote. I think that people need to remember the difference between enjoying leisure time and simply being lazy. I think that sometimes we like to look at a lot of millionaires and say, oh my gosh, they are so lucky that they got to where they are now. And you know, there are some uh, millionaires who are coming from wealthy families, but there are other entrepreneurs and millionaires such as Damon John, who did not come from a rich or wealthy family, came from, you know, an average life and worked their way up, hustled to get to where they are now. So can we really call them lucky? So with that being said, we're going to look at the very, very last quote. Um... And I'll read it now. So, Franklin says, So much for industry, my friends, and attention, attention to one's own business. But to these we must add frugality, if we would make our industry more certainly successful. Going further down, it reads, Many a one, for the sake of finery on the back, have gone with a hungry belly and half starved their families. Silks and satins, Scarlet and velvets, as poor Richard says, put out the kitchen fire. These are not necessities of life. They can scarcely be called the conveniencies. And yet, only because they look pretty, how many want to have them? Now, Americans have a real issue with consumerism. And this starts from an early age. 
I think back to middle school and even now in high school um, and it always makes me, I guess upset would be the word when I see teenagers wearing Yeezys, Jordans or Supreme clothing. All these things cost like $300 or up. There are sneakers that cost $500, $1,000 and teenagers are wearing them. And I'm like, do I get upset at the teens or do I get upset at the parents? Because where are they getting this money from? Like this money can be used to go toward starting a business, college tuition, a car, down payment on a house later on in life. Yet we spend it on all these material things. And like I said, this mindset starts in childhood and carries on into adulthood. And it's scary. Um, but like this quote says, we need to live a life of frugality. One of the things that surprised me the most when I was researching about millionaires is that they don't have a budget. And that surprised me because I thought that they would be, you know, not strict, but um, track their money more. Like 2000 is going towards this, 5000 is going towards that per month. Um, but instead, they live frugal lives and are just careful with how they spend. So they don't have a budget per se. They are just careful with, you know, um, with what they buy, how much they buy, etc. And it always makes me think back, you know, as we think about millionaires not having a budget and, you know, teens wearing unexpensive clothing, it makes me think back to when people always say, the rich try to look poor and the poor try to look rich. And another statistic or not a statistic rather but a generalization about millionaires is that they don't follow the crowd um you know people we the average american gets money and they spend 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 you know we love instant gratification we get money and we immediately want to buy something we see something we buy something instead of Okay, I got this money. Now I'm going to save. I'm going to save up so that in the future, when I am financially secure, that is when I can go out and buy the things that I want. But we actually do the opposite, most of us um, in America. We get money and we just spend, buy, and then spend and buy and then struggle uh, to pay the bills or live the life of leisure that the previous quote was talking about. Um, so I just wanted to highlight the end of the second part of the quote, which reads, these are not the necessities of life. They can scarcely be called the conveniencies and yet only because they look pretty, how many want to have them? What is a necessity? What is a conveniency? What is a need? What is a want? When you know the difference between the two, that is when you can really begin to um, start your journey to financial freedom because and be successful. Because without knowing the difference, you're always going to be in that's trapped into that consumerism mindset um, that these companies want you to get into, buying, buying, and buying. And as we see through the lifestyles of millionaires, not even just millionaires, but just people who are financially independent, um, they know how to save, invest, um, and decipher between needs and their wants. Now, what, now, how does all of this that we just read and talk about relate back to the self? All of this uh, is really just psychological and has to do with rewiring the way that we think. Um, these self-help routines, the one that I'm following, the ones that you all probably were 
um, you know, experimenting on or self-help books that you're reading, notice that they call us to change our selves, not outside circumstances. Looking at my self-help experiment, I need to go to bed um, early, wake up early. I need to read, you know, daily, exercise, all these things I need to push myself to do. It doesn't say, oh, um, you know, wait for your family to start going to bed at 9.30, waking up at 4.30, said you too can join in and start doing it with them. No, whether or not my family was going to do this with me, with or without me, I still needed to do this because I know, um, you know, where I, the goals that I want to achieve and what it takes to get there. So, like I said, this relates to the self because it really forces us to question our commitment, I guess you'd say, our commitment um, to the goals that we have set for, our, for ourselves. Lastly, um, I wanted to talk about a word that kept on popping up um, twice in the three quotes that we've read and uh, multiple times throughout the entire reading in Benjamin Franklin's The Way to Wealth. And that word is diligence. As I look up characteristics of millionaires, that is one word that popped up, diligence. This sets millionaires apart from everyone else. I think some of us easily give up when things don't go our way or when we feel like it's getting hard. But when millionaires fell, they don't say, okay, oh, I tried, that's it. They approach that goal, that task, whatever it is, from a different angle and persist <laughs> until they achieve that thing. And so I think what, like I said, I think that these self-help experiments, routines, books really call us to um, look at our own selves, our own characteristics, and change our habits uh, in order to be successful. So with that, I'll end here and tom tomorrow I will share more from another reading. Hey, hey, it is the night of day two. I had a really, really busy and long day. I think I overestimated what I could get done and I'm really adjusting to um, this new schedule. I feel like my my whole body, um, daily schedule, everything has changed. Um, so I'm learning to adjust. With that being said, I don't think I made the hour reading mark. Uh, I was busy trying to finish this essay, which I still have one more page of. So it is currently 9.10 and I don't think I'm gonna make it to bed by 9.30, maybe 10 p.m. But regardless, I'm still gonna wake up at 4.30 a.m. I wanna keep that the same. Um, I did take a nap early in the day, so I feel like that'll make up for me going to bed a little bit later. Um, and as far as my exercise goes, I did walk in total one an hour and a half. So I'm gonna count that as my exercise since I, I ran out of time. Um, I also went to work, so that's why the day was a little bit hectic. Um, but I think I'm learning, you know, how to manage my time better. I think this experiment is forcing me to learn how to manage my time better, um, understand my body and, um, you know, just how I function, what are the best times, what am I most um, productive during the day. I think waking up in the morning has definitely helped with that. But um, so anywho, today was a little bit harder, um, but... I still feel like it was a success because I learned. I learned more about myself. I'm learning what's working, what's not working, sort of. So I am ready to face tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good morning. It is the morning of the third day. And I'm so happy that um, I did this, <laughs> that I actually woke up at 4 30 a.m over these past three days um because i used to wake up at like at nine and then summer is approaching so i would wake up even later than that 
um, but I'm glad that I'm putting myself into a routine. I can't wait till I reach the 30th day, then the 300th day, so on and so forth. I'm really excited to continue this beyond this experiment. Um, so I am looking forward to um, recording this last day and I'll see you later. Hey guys, I'm back and today we will be reading um, our second text and this is going to be our second and last um, text analysis. Today I will be reading from Norman Vincent Peale's The Power of Positive Thinking, Chapter 4, The Prayer Power. So for today I'm going to be reading one quote. It's a rather large quote. Um, so I'm going to sum up a little bit about what this reading was about as a whole. Um, Pill discussed how through prayer we are able to control the energy that flows within us. And that and within us there are all of these um, forces that through prayer we can control these forces that lie within us and tap into um, power that we otherwise wouldn't um, utilize without prayer. And so not only can, through prayer can we control, you know, uh, this energy and forces within us, but we are also able to create a more harmonious self and create this positive energy that then reflects in our actions and produces positive outcomes in our lives. And so with that being said, I'll jump right into the quote. Peel says, the formula is one, prayerize, two, picturize, three, actualize. By prayerize, my friend meant a daily system of creative prayer. When a problem arose, he talked it over with God very simply and directly in prayer. Moreover, he did, he did not talk with God as some vast and far off shadowy being, but conceived of God as being with him in his office, in his home, on the street, in his automobile, always nearby as a partner, as a close associate. He took seriously the biblical injunction to pray without ceasing. He interpreted it as meaning that he should go about every day discussing with God in a natural, normal manner the questions that had to be decided and dealt with. The presence came finally to dominate his conscience and ultimately his unconscious thinking. He prayerized his daily life. He prayed as he walked or drove his car or performed everyday activities. He filled his daily life full of prayer. That is, he lived by prayer. He did not often kneel to offer his prayers, but would, for example, say to God, as to a close associate, what will I do about this, Lord? Or give me a fresh thought on this, Lord. He prayerized his mind and so prayerized his activities. The second point in his formula of creative prayer is to pictureize. The basic factor in physics is force. The man who assumes success tends already to have success. People who assume failure tend to have failure. When either failure or success is pictureized, it strongly tends to actualize in terms equivalent to the mental image pictured. To assure something worthwhile happening, first pray about it and test it according to God's will. Then print a picture of it on your mind as happening, holding the picture firmly in consciousness. Continue to surrender the picture to God's will. That is, say, put the picture in God's hands and follow God's guidance. Work hard and intelligently, thus doing your part to achieve success in the matter. Practice believing and continue to hold the picturization firmly in your thoughts. Do this and you will be astonished at the strange ways in which the picturization comes to pass. In this manner, the picture actualizes. That which you have prayerized and picturized actualizes according to the pattern of your basic realizable wish when conditioned by invoking God's power upon it. And if, moreover, you give fully of yourself to its realization. I am a firm believer in the power of prayer. 
and the power of manifestation and the power of positive thinking and the power of speaking life into your goals into your visions into whatever it is that you want to achieve i strongly believe it um someone who is really close to me was talking about um how she purchased her first um home or condo rather and she said that she got the um blueprint of the condo um she prayed about getting the condo she manifested it visualized her actually getting the place and she bought it she has it now she's had it for a couple of years now um but there is really power in um prayer and manifestation and i think man manifesting uh, has been around for a long time but i think it's become more mainstream nowadays and it simply means just to make something clear or to make something obvious and so through manifestation we are able to clearly envision what it is that we want for ourselves for our lives or you know what um what success we want for our business or that a or that whatever grade it is that you want in your class when you manifest it it will come true and it brings me back to part of this quote which says the man who assumes success tends already to have success. People who assume failure tend to have failure. When either failure or success is picturized, it strongly tends to actualize in terms equivalent to the mental images pictured. And this goes back to this idea that through prayer, we can control energy that flows within us and create a more harmonious self. I truly believe that what you have, the energy that you hold within yourself, will reflect and translate into real life uh into your actions into you know whatever they put out or produce in the world um when we already believe that we can um get that a or become a millionaire or launch a successful business or whatever it is that we want to achieve when we already believe it claim it manifest it pray about it we all ready will achieve that thing now of course there's going to be other factors but when you are already doubting or um you know claiming failure then of course that is what you are going to produce you're going to produce failure you're going to produce poor or negative outcomes now how does this relate back to um the millionaire's daily routine right because i'm following this routine that's supposed to promise um you know this success or wealth um that's supposed to be the intended outcomes right so i think that this is directly correlated to this routine and any self-help routine because when you walk into something already with negative thoughts a negative attitude um how can you intend to produce something positive or something good out of holding onto all of this negative energy now i know that not everybody is um religious and may not believe in the in prayer or the power of prayer but things each person you know work differently things work uh for for different people and at least for the people around me and for myself prayer has definitely worked when it comes to praying about you know these certain goals or certain things that um i want in my life and i love how um i love how in this quote it was talking about how prayer became a way of life prayer became a part of this person's uh daily life and the hopes of producing these positive outcomes which was then actually um you know given to him it actually he actually succeeded in you know producing these positive outcomes but alongside prayer was also picturizing right so yes you prayed about this thing but what is your vision do you have a vision for that thing Cause without vision how can your plans succeed how can your how can you achieve those goals without a vision of you already succeeding those goals um and then actualizing once you pray once you picturize 
it actualizes it actually comes true so anywho there is definitely power in prayer and manifestation and i think that this goes back to the self and i, and I believe i was talking about this earlier about this mindset change this mindset shift that needs to take place in order for us to become successful if you do want to become successful and again success looks different for each person you have to already believe that you can achieve that thing because when you already believe that you can achieve your goals then that is going to change how you work toward those goals and when you believe that you can succeed um, and you will you know be prosperous then you're going to be motivated to work toward that thing so anywho i will close it here and just leave you guys again with the formula one prayerize two picturize and three actualize Hey guys, so it is the night of the third day, which means this is the last day of the experiment. Uh, to sum up how my day went, um, it was a little bit hard today um, in the morning, like sticking with the routine that I had set for myself. Um, I didn't exercise and that has really proven hard for me <laughs> over these past three days, like exercising and getting through it, especially since it's summer and it's hot now. Um, but as mentioned before, um, you know, this journey for me, and I keep on saying journey because I want this to continue, right? So after these three days, I'm still gonna continue with um, this daily routine, with going to sleep at 9.30, waking up at 4.30, um, and really making this a lifestyle of mine, um, even after I reach my goals um, that I've set for myself. So even though this is the last day, I am still going to share a little bit um, tomorrow. And then, um, yeah, so I'll see you in the morning again, <laughs> or tomorrow rather. Bye. So in closing, as I reflect upon these past three days, I will say that I do feel like this routine was successful. I know I'm not measuring success based on the amount of money that's in my bank account because I didn't expect to become a millionaire at the end of these three days. I'm measuring success based on how challenged I was. I feel like any routine that I followed would have called me to change something about myself, but most importantly, change my mindset. And when we are changing our mindset, our habits, and our routines, that is challenging. And I was definitely challenged over these past few days. I was challenged to one, figure out how um, how much I really wanted to you know achieve my long-term and short-term goals and be persistent and diligent towards achieving those goals. I think one thing that I'll take away from this experiment is the formula outlined in Norman Vincent Pills, The Power of Positive Thinking. One, prayerize. Two, picturize. And lastly, actualize and I'll carry that on with me through the rest of this journey as I continue the millionaires daily routine and throughout the rest of my life as I continue to create goals and achieve those goals